issue of untranslatability translation possible or impossible reacting to the translation of his poems from spanish into other european languages pablo neruda commented in many of the translations into french my poetry escapes nothing remains one cannot protest because it says the same thing as one has written but it is obvious that if i had been a french poet i would not have said what i did in that poem because the value of the words is so different i would have written something different translation of poetry has seemed so daunting a task to scholars because as robert frost has put it poetry is something which is lost in translation grounds of untranslatability translation studies have long been confined to the periphery of research in the humanities probably out of the prevalent misconception that the act of translation involves wayward attempts at bridging two societies which are diverse linguistically and culturally and that our ideas are completely dependent upon words to gain in corporeity and life in his seminal treatise the diversity of human language construction and its influence on the mental development of mankind wilm von humboldt said that languages tend to shape the thoughts of the people who use them this idea was carried forward though in a more radical fashion by edward safir who firmly believed that languages are enmeshed in their cultural context and so the scientific study of language could not be separated from anthropology and psychology in his view language is a guide to social reality it powerfully conditions all our thinking about social problems and processes we see and hear and otherwise experience very largely as we do because the language habits of our community predispose certain choice of interpretation 1986 elaborating upon the statements of sapir his own disciple benjamin lee worf gave the linguistic relativity principle known popularly as sapir worf hypothesis according to which users of markedly different grammars are pointed by their grammars towards different types of observations and different evaluations of externally similar acts of observation and hence are not equivalent as observers research conducted by john a lucy at the university of chicago and by stephen c levinson at max planck institute for psycholinguistics in the netherlands have lent scientific support to the concept of linguistic relativity lucy showed that because of peculiarities of one mayan language in south america its speakers constantly categorized objects according to the material of which they were made while english speaking people categorized the same objects according to their shape george steiner 1975 has also observed that any act of human communication can be seen as involving a kind of translation it follows then from steiner's formulation that meaning does not reside in a text but is generated by interpretation derrida deconstruction the french deconstructive thinker jacques derrida's he states the theme of a transcendental signified was constituted within the horizon of an absolutely pure transparent and unequivocal translatability derridian philosophy rejects the possibility of inferring determinate coherent absolute and final meaning from any text on the grounds that the ostensible meaning is due to the differential play of language and that the stable meaning 
is ineluctably dissipated by the agency of the opposing forces within the system into indefinite and innumerable possibilities. He applies this perceptive to the notion of translation and comments. Translation practices the difference between signifier and signified. But if this difference is never pure, translation is no more so. We will never have, and in fact, we never had any transfer of pure, signified from one language to another or within one language. Aesthetic impediments. The notion of untranslatability has been worked out by some aestheticians like Bradley and Bosma to deny the possibility of translation on the grounds that translation attempts to separate words from their meanings, which is absolutely impossible. As Bradley observes, and this identity of content and form is no accident. Just as there is in music not sound, on one side and a meaning on the other, but expressive sound. So in a poem, the true content and the true form neither exist nor can be imagined apart. These thinkers argue that a literary artist exploits the sensuous aspect of words in order to accomplish extra-linguistic semantic purpose. Thus achieving intralingual synonymy is far from possible let alone the interlingual one. Translation versus transcreation. Translators and theorists have reacted to the algebraic insurmountable difficulties and tried to suggest a way out in their own ways. This brings us to the most happening debate in translation studies that is free versus literal translation. Given below are the various theoretical contestations to the claims of untranslatability enlisted above. Noam Chomsky's Universal Grammar In 1950s and 1960s, Noam Chomsky tried to establish that beneath all the variety of different languages, there is a common and innate substructure which generates language. The deep structures of a language are conceived as a kind of inherited grammar in which kernel statements are transformed and built up into sentences. This universal theory of syntax or the transformational generative approach met with immediate universal endorsement. In his much quoted essay on linguistic aspects of translation, Roman Jacobson endorses Chomsky by saying, Languages differ in what they must convey and not what they may convey. In its cognitive function, language is minimally dependent on the grammatical patterns. The cognitive level of language not only admits but directly requires recording interpretation, that is translation. Any assumption of ineffable or untranslatable cognitive data would be a contradiction in terms. Walter Benjamin's The Task of the Translator Walter Benjamin's views a translation as a work in its own right, an artifact which issues from the afterlife of the original. Considering the plurality and heterogeneity of human languages, in the post-Babelian world, Benjamin believes that translation ultimately serves the purpose of expressing the central reciprocal relationship between languages. It cannot possibly reveal or establish this relationship itself, but can represent it by realizing it in embryonic or intensive form. The Task of Translator, 1923 he possesses the hypothesis of a pure language of humanity, which includes all exclusive and different languages. For Benjamin, the original work remains within the specificity of a single isolated language organically, while translation forays into the realm of the universal monolithic language of man, the language of truth. Overcoming Impediments the idea of untranslatability can be refuted on more palatable grounds asserting a translator's latitude 
for creativity in translation. Thus, translations are possible because meaning derived from phonic value of words can be accomplished approximately by utilizing another series of phonic configurations from a different language. Evocation of all the varieties of meanings is not to be aspired for in translation. Just emotive meaning is to evoke through alteration of images and ideas in the original. Thus, translation will have its unique internal structure. A translator remains focused on achieving near replication of the defining characteristics of a literary work, leaving aside the contingent ones.